Right, so I'm having <laughs> I'm having a sore throat issue, so got some hot water. Um, so back in October, I did a video because in the UK, Black History Month is in October, but in America, it is in February. So back in October, I challenged myself to make sure that I was reading books by black authors every month not just in Black History Month, either you know, either October or February, but to make sure that I was doing it all year round. Unfortunately, there's just so much, <laughs> there's so much published by white people that when I look through my shelves, it is ma majority white authors, white British authors, white American authors. So I just wanted to consciously curate what I was reading to make sure that I was including those other things because I do own them. I do have them on my shelves. And so in October, I did, go through all the books that were on my shelves. I have a few more to add today, which I'd like to tell you about, but I wanted to sort of do a little update on how I've been getting on with my Black History Month readings, my Black History, my Black, <laughs> my, sorry, <coughs> on my readings for this challenge, from this challenge to curate what I'm reading each month. Anyway, that did not make any sense. Excuse me, I'm not well. Okay, so I told you about the books that I was reading in October, then for November, I tried two books actually. Um, unfortunately, one of them I DNF. The first one was Bessie Smith by Jackie King. This is a biography of Bessie Smith's life um, by Jackie Kay, who really admires her. I unfortunately DNF'd this. I'm not sure if it's because I didn't enjoy Jackie Kay's writing. I've never read from her before. I'm not sure if it's because biography as a genre is not something I'm particularly interested in or it might just not have been the right time for me to read that I'm keeping it on my shelves because I'd like to give it another go like I don't see why I wouldn't have liked it it seemed to me to be well written like I don't I just don't know so I think it might have been just me at that time was not ready for it so yeah that one was a DNF and then the next book I read in that month was Passing by Nella Larson which I did talk about in my best books of 2022. I loved that. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so that is sort of a classic looking at people who are black but can pass as white um, uh, and it brings it together with themes of women's equality. So very particularly the, I suppose the narrator, the woman, the woman whose standpoint we're reading the book from, I don't think it's told in first person, I think it is third person, but whose, whose sort of story we're following, she is in a relationship which is very much oppressive towards the female, um, and then, but then she's judging this other woman who is in a relationship in which the husband very much detests black people, he is very racist, and yet the wife is like lying to him to get away with being his wife. It's about those sorts of judgments, it's about playing those two themes off against each other and it was just really well done. Then my December read was going to be Nightcrawling by Layla Motley, which was a, the Booker 2022 nominated book. I think Layla Motley's writing is beautiful. She is traditionally a poet, that's, that's where she comes from, she is a poet and you can tell in her writing. Some of the imagery in there is so like, it's just so beautiful. I mean heartbreaking but beautiful and like there's one scene that really sticks in my mind where the police come along, the, she's being essentially uh, sexually assaulted in an alley and she makes this com this allusion to how the police remove, remove the perpetrator but then they place their fingers into the bruises that his fingers have made. Like just that imagery was just amazing but I mean, okay, <laughs> this is one of the hardest books I've ever had to DNF because it made me question so much about why I was DNFing it. Because I felt like, like one of my big things is story, like books are supposed to teach us about how other people's lives are, like about what's happening in the world. Not, that's not necessarily their only function, but that is a big part of it. L learning about how, you know, a life outside of your own, about other people's opinions and perspectives and especially when you read the author's note at the end, Layla's note to, to her readers, this is these are real events that happen. This is based on real stories coming out and being reported on about police brutality, police brutality of sex workers in the US. These are real lives being lived and yet I found it too difficult to read. Like that, like that really made me question a lot about myself 
and I kept wanting to push myself through saying this is important this is an important story to know but ultimately I found it too traumatic to read it was too sad and that and it makes me feel bad about myself to have dnf'd it in the end my decision my, my hand was forced i had to return it to the library it was re- requested by another person but the problem was it just kept languishing like i'd gotten to about 45 percent, and it kept languishing on my bedside table because i just didn't want to pick it up i didn't want to hear any more um, but i have I, I am very aware that a big triggering thing for me is when it involves the neglect or abuse of children and there's a character that our protagonist is looking after a young child who has been abandoned essentially in his house by his mother his story is quite prominent within the wider the wider story like he's there he's a presence in it a lot it's not just like a like a side plot it is very much there um and that yeah, it's it's when there's children involved that I find it particularly difficult. Like I've read sad books, I've read traumatic books, but this one just pushed me a bit far, and so I did I DNF'd. And yeah, it was one of the hardest books to DNF, and it really made me question a lot. So, so January's book was The Dancing Face by Mike Phillips. I had such high hopes for this. So this is um, a thriller. So Bernadine Evaristo um, has been working with Penguin to curate this Black Britain series which is authors who have been over the years so this was published in the 1990s uh, but basically authors who have been neglected who she thinks should have their story you know their stories pushed and publicized a lot more this is about the the way in which art and artifacts have been acquired in um, British museums and well you know it's the same thing in European and American museums but in British museums is what we're focusing on Um, and the fact that reparations have not been made to the countries from which they came, even now that we know that the, the, you know reparations should be made, why are they not being made? And so this is a bit of a heist thriller, although kind of flipped on its head because the heist happens right at the beginning. And what's important is how the different vested interests in the artifact that's stolen come into play and complicate the story the political interests the financial interests the um like personal politic politics um interests and personal ideology interests come into play and it should be so good it should have been brilliant but this is another one i dnf'd and i'm feeling really guilty because that's three of the books that i've mentioned so far i dnf'd and that is does not feel like a good start. I feel like I should be sat here saying, this was amazing, this was amazing, this was amazing, but that's not honest. And there are going to be problems. Everyone has faults. Um, the point is to keep trying. But this... So why did I DNF? So the first thing, the first thing that w- like just was really getting on my nerves was the depiction of women. Regardless of race or whoever, the depiction of women was appalling. Women were either stereotyped, so for instance, there like there was um, a girl in a university class who is the class SWAT and she's boring and she's dowdy and she stood at the front of the class reading off her really boring essay for everyone to listen to, even though nobody cares. And she she that is like her personality is that she's a boring SWAT and that's how she dresses and that's just who she is. And then basically every other woman mentioned in this is reduced to how she looks the shape of her breasts and there's like a there's like a a woman who comes in who's the head of the police uh the police force who are assigned with tracking down the artifacts once it goes once it gets stolen and basically every characteristic that she shows would have been lauded in a man but she basically makes everyone uncomfortable because she's pretty but she's serious about her job and the way in which that's described gave me like just made me shudder like god's sake (laughs) yeah so that that was the first thing that made me like oh for god's sake but then actually it ends up being really boring it's a thriller it should not be boring even psychological thrillers are not boring i didn't want to i just again found myself not wanting to pick it up and then i just said to myself I, i could have pushed through you know but in the end i was like i don't want to i just don't want to so i put it down so I've DNF'd. So that's the third DNF. But we come to February. So I'm filming this on like 
the February the 2nd, so I haven't yet started this month's pick. I've decided this month to read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. This was a Reese's Book Club pick. It's one of the, like, the most popular books. I think it, it was nominated in the Goods Read, Goodreads Awards, so I think it's got like general appeal, and I think I've been focusing on other stuff, so I think something light would be a good one to put in here. I've got that on my Kindle, so I'm quite looking forward to reading that. Also, I wanted a romance because it's February, I just felt like I should pick a romance, it just needed to be done. Um, but other things that I would like to read this month, so I... One of my goals is short stories. I've half read N.K. Jemison's How Long Till Black Futures Month, um, so I'd like to finish that one this month. At university, on one of my modules, we are learning about colonialism and post-colonialism, race and identity, and nationhood. I've been really thinking about this book, which is one I've, half, I've had half read for a long time, which is Decolonising the Camera, Photography and Racial Time. This is a collection of academic essays written by Mark Seeley. I don't know if it's too bright for you to see his name, but yeah, Mark Seeley. Uh, these are excellent, and through the conversations we've been having so far this semester, I keep thinking about his work, so I'd like to finish this, because potentially I'd like to draw on this as well for some of our assessments that we've got coming up. I feel like this is the way I want to take it, like I want to bring in my passion for photography into some of the assessments I'm doing, so... I really want to read this one. And then I also recently acquired Bland Fanatics, Liberals, Race and Empire by Pankaj Mishra. So this is um, an Indian author. A leading in Indian public intellectual, the heir to Edward Said. Um, Edward Said being someone we are really um, focusing on at the moment. So yeah, so this is a collection of essays uh, that grapple with the meaning and content of Anglo-American liberalism, its relation relations with colonialism, the American, uh, the Global South, Islam and humanitarian war. Mishra confronts writers such as Jordan Peterson, Neil Ferguson and Salman Rushdie. He describes the doubling down of an intelligentsia against a background of weakening Anglo-American hegemony. Um, he explores the commitments of Ta-Nehisi Coates uh, and the ideological determinations of The Economist. These essays provide a vantage point from which to understand the current crisis and its deep origins. So really relevant to the stuff that we're learning at the moment and then just four books that have come onto my shelves recently that fit the bill that weren't in my obviously previous mention of all the, all the books I had for this um so we've got No Land to Light On by Z Yara Z Zagib sorry, which I believe has been nominated for the Dylan Thomas Prize. I was watching a book haul from S Simon Savage and I think he added this to his. It's described as Exit West meets an American marriage, uh, which, neither of which I've read, so I don't know. Uh, but in this breathtaking and, and evocative novel about a young Syrian couple in the throes of new love on the cusp of their bright future, when a travel ban rips them apart on the eve of their son's birth. And then I've got three books from Indigo Press, which is a very small press that I'm very sort of, I'm excited about, like reading a lot of their book descriptions, I'm really excited about. So we've got Ogandimma, or Everything Will Be Alright by Ukamaka Olisakwe. And this is a tale of departure, loss and adaptation of mothers who experience trauma at the hands of controlling men, leaving them with burdens they find too much to bear. After an episode of abuse results in exile from her family in Kano, 17-year-old Og Ogadinma is sent to her aunt's house in Lagos. When a whirlwind romance with an older man descends into indignity, she is forced to channel her strength and resourcefulness to escape a fate that appears all but inevitable. Feminist classic in the making, um, her second novel introduces a heroine for whom it is impossible not to root and announces the author as a gifted chronicler of the patriarchal experience. Silence is My Mother Tongue by Sulaiman Adonia. And in a time of war, what is the shape of love? Saba arrives in an East African refugee camp as a young girl, devastated to have been wrenched from school and forced to abandon her books as her family flees to safety. In this unfamiliar, crowded and often hostile community, she must carve out a new experience. As she struggles to maintain her sense of self, she remains fiercely protective of her mute brother, Hagos. Each sibling resisting the roles gender and society assign through a cast of complex, beautifully drawn characters, Suleiman Adonia questions what it means to be a man, to be a woman, to be an individual when circumstance has forced the loss of all that makes a home or a future. 
Adonia has written an insider's view of the textures of life in a refugee camp, both intimate and epic. This subversive tale of transgression dissects society's ability to wage war on its own women and explores the stories we must tell to survive in a broken, inhospitable environment. So, so Suleiman Adonia is a novelist who fled Eritrea as a child with his mother and siblings following the Om Hajar massacre in 1976. He spent his early life in a refugee camp in Sudan. So this is like, uh, you know, own voices that he has first-hand experience of refugee camps. And then finally, I've got An Act of Defiance by Irene Sabatini. And this one says, Hurrah 2000. Gabrielle is a newly qualified lawyer fighting for justice for a girl. Ben is an urbane and character charismatic junior diplomat attached to Harari with the American embassy with high level pressure on Gabrielle to drop the case and the president's youth wing terrorizing his political opponents as he tightens his grip on power they begin a tentative love affair but when they fall victim to a shocking attack their love their lives splinter across continents and their stories diverge forcing Gabrielle on a painful journey towards self-realization. Reen Sabatini navigates Zimbabwe's unfolding political crises, showing how the dehumanising effects of state-sponsored violence can shape and remake a life. An act of defiance is a sweeping political drama about a young woman's fight for love and agency in turbulent times. Um, yeah, so as I say, if you haven't heard of um, Indigo Press or any of these sound intriguing, go and check them out. They, I think a lot of their books sound amazing. So there we go. There's some more. So that's how I'm getting on with my ensuring that I'm reading more black authors, more diversely, because I think you have to put the conscious effort in. You have to curate what you're reading to make sure that you're doing it, because there are so many books in the world and it is heavily skewed towards white authors. So I'm trying my best <laughs> and I'll check in with you. I suppose. I mean, I'll check in with you when I do wrap-ups. I'm going to do seasonal wrap-ups, I've decided, so I'll have a winter wrap-up coming. And then um, I'll check in with you again in the UK Black History Month to see how I got on doing a whole year of it. <laughs>